Hey everyone, thanks for joining us on today's video. We're taking a look at chemical equations and how to balance them. Now, keep in mind, this is gonna be a little bit more complicated as it gets further through the video. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna make two videos. Um, the first one has to do with, is an equation balanced? And then the second has to do with, how can we balance it? Now, as a reminder, in the past we've talked about conservation of mass, basically, if we start with 15 kilograms of a reactant, we're going to yield after the reaction the same amount, so 15 kilograms. If we start with 200 atoms, we're going to yield 200 atoms at the end, and that's part of conservation of mass. So if we're missing something or something's not balanced, we know that either went in the atmosphere or that it accumulates somewhere else. And we'd have to, as a scientist, go back to see where our error was. But it should be there. We're not going to create, we're not going to destroy any matter, okay, throughout a reaction. So the first problem we're gonna take a look at is 4Fe3O2 yields 2Fe2O3. The first thing I like to do when setting up the equation is to find the arrow. Okay, where is the reaction taking place? Now, I draw a line straight down from there to split up the equation into two. This helps me visually. It also helps me when I'm actually putting the symbols underneath. And I do this to kind of help me with balancing it. So I know that there's going to be iron and there's oxygen. If I take a look above here, iron and oxygen. I want to be careful I'm not assuming that if it's on the left hand side it's going to be on the right hand side. It should be. That does mean that's always the case. That might be the reason why we're finding that mistake in the problem. So always look at what we have on that left or the right side. Now we're going to be using the coefficients and subscripts to look at how many atoms of each element. So if we're looking at iron we see that there's a coefficient of four and no subscripts. So there's four iron atoms and there's three O2s, so it's like saying O2 plus O2 plus O2, which would be a total of six oxygen atoms. On the right hand side, we see two Fe2s, so that means there's four iron atoms, and there's, don't forget that two is part of that O3, so it's two O3, and that would make six oxygen atoms. So we are balanced with this equation. If we slide to the next problem, Okay, Mg plus O2 yields 2MgO. All right, so I already have kind of the set up the columns here. I'm just gonna draw the arrow, or I'm sorry, the line to help guide me through this problem. All right, magnesiums, there's only one. Oxygen, there's two because of the subscript. And then on the right hand, magnesiums, I see the coefficient of two, and that coefficient goes with both the magnesium and the oxygen. All right, so we have an unbalanced problem here. And if I was doing this in a lab and I wrote this, I noticed I would have made a mistake or I need to find where that extra magnesium was in the very beginning. So maybe it pulled out of the atmosphere or you know whatever the element might have been. Okay, so we need to find our accountability for that. Next up, we have H2O yields H2 plus O2. All right, some of you guys can visually answer this already, but again, I'll do the math to it. Hydrogen, we have two. Oxygen, no subscript, so there's only one. And then on the right hand side, as our products, we have two hydrogen and we have two oxygen. So this is not balanced. Okay, on the count of the oxygen, there's more on the right than on the left. Okay, 2K plus Cl2 yields 2KCl. All right, so our potassiums are K, right? There's two because of our coefficient. Our chlorine, there's two because of the subscript, right? That two coefficient does not go with the chlorine because there's a plus sign in between. And then on the right hand side, right, we have two potassium and we also have two chlorine, right? This time that coefficient does go with the chlorine. So this is a balanced problem. Now, the reason I'm setting up these columns, things are gonna get a lot more complicated, a lot more advanced. You already see there's a lot more going on here with subscripts and coefficients. Right, so that arrow line down, I've already gone through and put the elements there. So nitrogen, right, we have two nitrogen, right, hydrogen. Now, one thing you want to notice about hydrogen, when I wrote it down, there's hydrogen located here and here. So when I'm adding them up, I do two H3s, that's six, 
plus the two hydrogen there. So that's a total of eight hydrogens. Okay. Sulfur, there's only one. And then oxygen, there's four. Let's take a look on the right hand side on our product side. Nitrogen, that coefficient two is outside the parentheses that joins us. H4 has a subscript of two, so that's eight. Sulfur does not have subscript and then oxygen. So here we go, we have a balanced equation. So everything looks good there. Now again, that might've looked scary to you at first, but again, once we break down the steps, it makes things a lot easier. Okay, our last problem here is Na2S plus 2AgNO3, which yields NaNO3 plus Ag2S. All right, so draw my line down here. Right, sulfurs, we have two, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sodiums, we have two. Sulfurs, see, I'm thinking ahead already, we have one. That two for the coefficient is gonna, going to apply to the Ag and O3, okay? So Ag, right, hopefully you remember that. Silver, okay, we have two. Nitrogen, we have two. And then we have two O3s, which means six oxygen atoms. And on the right-hand side, we have one sodium, so we know something's not adding up. Sulfurs, we have one. Silver, we have two. Okay, those both are balanced. Nitrogen, we have one. Oh, not balanced there. And O3, we have three. So we actually have three elements that actually don't match up our balance with the left-hand side, right? And that's important to later on identify which specific element is not balanced. balanced. All right, so that's it for today. Hopefully you saw how we set up the, basically the column at the arrow. We put all the elements that were above on the left-hand side below, and the same with the right, and then we tallied the number of atoms. Okay, if they all check out, we have what's called a balanced chemical equation. If not, it's unbalanced. There's some sort of error going on, and it's our job hopefully to find that out later on. Join us next time for our next video as we learn how to make these problems balanced. Mm -hmm.